I went to election judge training last week. They told us that none of us are handwriting experts, so we should just ignore the signature on the ballot application. Only problem is we're a signature verification state here in Illinois. When I consulted the training manual, it didn't even mention the process. And when I called Election Central, it was crickets. I've never denied anyone a ballot in a polling place based on a signature or anything else. It was odd that after 15 years of serving as an election judge, they would suddenly introduce this narrative. What purpose does it serve? Leona Helmsley was a prominent New York business lady in the 1980s until she was rebranded as the Queen of Mean and practically run out of New York. What purpose did that serve? This week, the New York Times told us that we uh, may encounter violent situations in the polling place this year. It might be just too dangerous to go voting. And um, we have to wonder, you know, where where does that narrative come from? And what purpose does that, does that serve? And who has the power to create and disseminate these messages? And what's the purpose of it all? I guess we'll be finding out very soon on election day. Welcome, welcome to Conservative Coffee Hour. I'm Stanley Smith. Paul Engel uh, says that politics is the art of policy making. We rarely hear anything about that because it's all become about winning the next election. That often has nothing to do with the public good or good governance. We discovered early on in our conversation here from political operatives that some topics are just best left, never mentioned, because of potential negative outcomes in voter turnout, disenfranchising voters, and inadvertently supporting false narratives. Now we have the New York Times spilling the beans on the story we've been trying to tamp down for four years. They told us there may be violence at the polling place on election day. Your vote may not count due to cyber threats, and you might be denied a ballot in the first place. The official narrative is that people are showing up in record numbers for early voting, but if you're a conservative voter, you might want to just stay home on election day. In the background, we have the reality of our situation that doesn't always jive with the narrative of the current times. Let's quickly review where we are right now. We have an election going on between a businessman and a lifelong bureaucrat. Many people can't afford groceries, and we hear there's a worldwide sex scandal brewing while space aliens are about to enter our world. I, I think that's about it. None of us want to be mean. At the same time, if you talk to people, you find out they're uh, kind of tuning out and lamenting that nothing much is going to change regardless of who is elected. In a way, we're making progress by dropping out of the narrative. Being disenfranchised at least makes us less susceptible to being manipulated. There is a lot of social, cultural, and political noise right now, plus generational shift. We can make one last stand. We may very well win, and for a short time, we can hold on to the idea that the best is yet to come. It's the best kind of aspiration, and there's nothing mean about it. If you would like to join us at Conservative Coffee Hour, Conservative Coffee Hour is every Saturday at 10 a.m. Central Time on Zoom. I will include my email in the description of this video. Be happy to send you an invitation. And I look forward to seeing you very, very soon.